What's up, guys? Rick here with your DFS preview for this week's Worldwide Technology Championship, an event that has been played in Mayakoba for the last handful of years, but it is switching coasts of the country and heading to Cabo. That's on uh, the western side. I believe it's actually in Baja, California. A little geography lesson for you there. And it is a new golf course. We've got a lot to tackle. It is Tiger Woods uh, design built less than 10 years ago, so we've got a talk through all of that. We've got to run through the data. We've got to figure out who's playing well and who's not. We're going to run a model at the end of the show. We're going to do it all. Let's not waste any more time and let's get right into it. L. Cardinal, a Tiger Woods designed golf course in Cabo. And let me tell you, Tiger Woods, when he designed this golf course, did not, did not have Ludwig Aberg in mind. Did not have Cameron Young in mind, did not have the PGA Tour in mind. This is a resort golf course with extremely wide fairways, generous greens, and it is designed for the high handicapper on vacation, a handful of pina coladas deep. That is is what this golf course is. And that's okay. I've played golf courses like this. It's all good. Cabo del, Cabo del Sol I've played is the same way, right? Very, very generous. No rough, just sand, beautiful location, all that fun stuff. That's okay. But now you're going to put the PGA Tour's best on it. And uh, watch out because this is likely, barring uh, something crazy that we don't see happening or a ton of wind, this is going to be a scoring fest. So uh, I'm going to show you a couple things here. I'm going to show you the key stats, then I'll show you the, the satellite imagery. So first off, this is the key stats model. Now, this, uh, if you've been paying attention, this has evolved so much over the course of the last couple of years where um, when we have really good data and we have a golf course that's been around for a long time, what I do is I, I run this correlation model and it finds the type of stats that are most common to success at that golf course. Well, this is a new golf course. And for major championships, we run into this issue most uh, frequently, but also for new golf courses, we run into this issue. So what I've started to do, and this is actually somewhat of a new calculation for uh, a new golf course. I have taken uh, similar style golf courses, uh, courses that are statistically similar, whether it be uh, on the scorecard, how long it is. This is 72, par 72, 7,450 yards, uh, green sizes, location, agronomy, a handful of s factors and try to build a course profile for a course that we've never seen before. And this is what pops out. So it says driving distance is critical. Um, you know, 7,450 yards. It says approach play is critical, which at 8,300 square feet on average in green size, usually what that creates is a situation where uh, there are more three putts guys are hitting more greens, but they're not necessarily closer to the hole. Uh, your first putt is generally longer. And then the ability to make a lot of putts in what we perceive to be uh, ideal scoring conditions makes strokes game putting pretty important things that, that, are, that don't seem to be important, uh, driving accuracy, for example. Now I will, um, heavily caveat this by saying that, I mean, this is a made up stat profile, right? Like I'm happy with the logic and the reason behind it and everything that's gone into it, but this is a made up profile for a golf course that we've never seen in major competition before. So take it with a grain of salt. But what I think is going to happen is uh, the longer, the better take aim, make a bunch of birdies and see if you're the best player when uh, the four rounds are over. Um, I will just scroll down quickly and show you that the guys that get the the best adjusted course fit, Isaiah, Isaiah Salindo, who you're going to see pop up a lot because he really only has like those four rounds from Las Vegas, so it's a small sample size issue. Ludwig Oberg, no surprise. Lucas Glover, Adam Svensson, Steven Yeager, Bo Hostler are basically the guys that bet the, get the best adjusted course fit on a, I don't want to say fake course, a, a calculated course profile. Now, if we look at the aerial footage, here it is, right? El Cardinal, which first of all, look at, look, look, this is, they're going to get me to go here. This pool, I measured it 450,000 square feet. You could get every green on this golf course three times over into that pool. That's how big it is. Um, so you can see there's the driving range. Uh, here are the whole, I mean, I mean, let's, let's just go through this real quick. Um, I'm going to draw a couple lines here. So from the back of the back tee box 
to the 300 yard mark, which would be, you know, your, your landing zone is what we would call this on, on most golf courses, right? Landing zone, 300 yards. So there it is kind of, uh, just short of that cluster of bunkers. So that's, that is our landing zone. That landing zone is 100 yards wide, a football field wide. Uh, okay. Wow. That's, that's, that's pretty big. Notice there's no rough, right? It's, uh, it's fairway. And then once you miss the fairway, if you're that errant, you get into sand, uh, whatever you want to call that native area, beach, whatever you want to call this stuff that you get kind of just, I, I think it's more native area and, and, and beach than anything. Uh, here's another hole. Let's go, let's go down here. Make sure we get the back tee box to 300 yards landing zone, which is about right here, which is, uh, just short of that appears to be a fairway bunker right there. Uh, just short of that, that landing zone is 79 yards wide. I mean, these are just massively generous. Let's do one more here. I haven't, I don't think I've, let's do this one. So this is back of this green to 300 yards is, is about here. It's 301. That landing zone, 64 yards wide. So we are routinely seeing, and just as I kind of look through this, right? I mean, this is, that's a short par four with water down the right, but the water's not in play because it's 250 yards. Even if you take on, I mean, I guess there's bunkers here, but with this bunker in the landing zone, this landing zone is still 75 yards wide. Now, most guys are going to be able to carry that from the back tee box. That's a, that's a 300 yard carry to carry that, to carry that bunker. Um, this is probably the most narrow one, right? So we've got narrow tee box to what looks to be the small, is that the green or the, T box. I guess this is the T box. Is that right? And it pinches down here. It's gotta be it's gotta go this way, right? Oh, it's a par three. Is it a par three or a long long par three or a short par four? That one I'm not sure about. But you get you get the gist here, right? Th this is a golf course that um appears to be very, very wide open. Here's another one. Let's do this one. Back of the back T box, 300 yards to here. It's just short of that bunker, if not right on it, 75 yards. So, I mean, I could do this 18 times. Uh, I'll spare you that. You can see how big the greens are. So, he here's what I think you need to do. Driving accuracy probably doesn't matter. If you're missing fairways, good luck to you. And then, uh, longer the better. Take aim with your approaches. Roll the putts. Get to 28 under? 30 under who I mean who knows how deep they're they're going to be able to take this thing it's going to depend on a little bit of wind but um because it is obviously coastal right I mean we are let's see from the clubhouse to the ocean 2,000 yards pretty close so we're gonna definitely uh could get a little wind this week we'll keep an eye on that for the Wednesday live chat but man I, I just don't see <laughs> I don't see any, I don't see any resistance. Where's the resistance? Where's the penalty? Where's the, I mean, there's a water hazard here, but that's not in play for the pros. It's in play for me. There are some bunkers in some awkward spots, but again, they're not really in play. Where's the, the penalty comes on a, a hundred yard miss off the tee. So I, I think this is, I think it's going to get scorched unless it gets super windy or something like that. But um, boy, yeah, that's, that's the way that I envision this. Anyway, um, let's, with that in mind, head over to the cheat sheet, start naming some names. Here's the cheat sheet at rickrungood.com. This is my website. Everything that you see from here on out will be from my website, giant database for, uh, golf betting and fantasy golf and just golf data in general. So here we go. Uh, five golfers over $10,000, Ludwig Ober, Cameron Young back in action, Sahith, Steven Yeager, and Lucas Glover. Um, all right. A, a lot to like, some stuff I have concerns about. So um, let's go to let's go to Ludi number one. This guy, you know, I was a little bit, admittedly, um, worried the last time. Not worried the last time we saw him, but like when you have a guy who is as brilliant off the tee and ball striking as he is, you get a little bit. Um, you get a little bit worried on wide open golf courses, right? Because you think, uh, you know. 
it doesn't necessarily um, magnify his strengths. Vegas, for example, or Jackson, for example. It doesn't matter, I don't think. You know, runner up in runner up in Jackson, T thirteen at the at Summerlin. He's gonna gain four strokes off the tee. He's gonna be one of the longest players in the field. He's gonna pile up four, five, six, seven, eight strokes on approach, and he's a good enough putter to win this. I think the win on the PGA tour is coming soon. He has already won on the European tour. He was phenomenal at the Ryder Cup. I, I think it's pretty clear he's the best player in this field. And um man, it is just brilliant what he's been up to. When you go over to the power rankings and look at the, uh, you know, just raw strokes gain total, he's getting 1.8 strokes per round over the last 35. It's the best in the field. If you start looking at some of the other items, like if you go to the fantasy tab and start looking at, you know, birdies made per round or something like that, something like a scoring stat, um, he's going to be second to only Isaiah Salinda. Again, he has only four rounds, so we can throw him out. So, so, so Ludi is basically number one. He piles up opportunities, 6.6 per round, which is uh, the best in the field. He gains more than anybody in in opportunities gains and opportunities plus gains. He's like inside the top five. So he is giving himself so many looks of 15 feet or closer, and he's converting on a lot of them. So it's really hard to see, uh, even on a golf course that is literally a football field wide in some spots of of fairways, um, while that's not going to be, you know, his, his long and straight, isn't going to be magnified. His long will still be fine. And he's going to be playing out of the fairway like everybody else. And he's still super dangerous after that. So um, big in on Ludwig. Cam Young, I think, is is pretty fascinating in his own right. We haven't seen him since the BMW Championship. He struggled. He limped to the finish line of last year. He lost strokes on approach in three straight, including 5.2 at Olympia Fields, which was pretty ugly. So not a great run at the end of the year for him. However, when I look at this uh, stat profile and I see a guy who hasn't played in over two months competitively, I usually kind of reset them back a little bit, right? You know, he was struggling down the down the end of the of of play. Was it um Was it fatigue? You know, if something goes wrong, now he's got two months to rest up, get right, and get back to being a world-class golfer. So I generally set back uh, these types of guys to their their baseline, which is very, very solid. And uh, another guy who is a pretty prolific birdie maker. You know, if we go to the last 50 rounds, Cam Young is playing uh, below his 100-round baseline in the last 50. If we go to the last 35, he is playing probably even worse than that I would imagine he is yeah he's nearly a quarter of a stroke per round underneath his baseline and still um when you look at that he even even at his worst even in in his current state which I would argue you can kind of forgive him for he's like the 20th best player in this field now you're going to pay significantly higher prices on that but I think it shows that even his D minus stuff is still better than the vast majority of this field. So I'm willing to buy back in on Cam Young. I'm a buyer on Sahith, and that's probably it on the rest of the 10K range for me. Um, Sahith coming off the victory two starts ago, and then he went and played. Where are you? Sahith? He went and played the Zozo Championship, finished T19. So uh, a golf course that allows you to bomb it, that doesn't care what direction you play it in, and then is going to ask you to be. Uh, uh, the ability to get lightning hot with the putter, yeah, that's exactly what what Sahith does, right? Gained nine strokes putting at in Napa. He gained four putting at TPC Southwind, four and a half at the Travelers, five point seven at the RBC Canadian Open. A constant gainer on the putting surface, and we're starting to get those ball striking gains back. And he's always a very good driver. So those are good signs. Um, the not so good signs are the rest of this 10K range, in my opinion. I like Steven Yeager, but not at this price. Right, I mean, he's he's been good. He piles up top 25s. We haven't seen the true true upside just yet. T9 to Rocket Mortgage is best finish on on the on the board here, and he is constantly gaining in the ball striking categories, which is fine. I I hate to see the ability to lose three, four, five, six, seven strokes on the putting surface. That worries me this week. And just when you start kind of comparing, you know, the best players in this field over the last 35, 36 rounds, something like that. You know, Jaeger is. I mean, he's good. He's gaining a stroke per round, but the but I mean, so is Sahith. Uh, Bo Hostler's been better. Adam Svensson's been better. Ludwig's been way better. I, I mean, I just think he's a little bit expensive here. I think he should probably, if he switched spots with Adam Svensson, I'd probably be fine. About a thousand bucks too expensive. So he's kind of an awkward man. Probably not going to be making a lot of my 
um, a lot of my lineups, unless he checks in at like 7% ownership or something like that, we'll know Wednesday, 3 p.m. on the live chat, Rick Run Good YouTube channel. And then this to me, Lucas Glover, I worry a lot about this. Um, you know, he had a career in a six start stretch from the Rocket Mortgage to the FedEx St. Jude. And it was built on his elite tee to green play, which I believe is still in there. And the ability to not lose eight strokes putting and to actually be a positive putter where he gained three and a half, five, four point eight, and three. Two of those converted to wins. The other two were a T4 and a T6. The problem that I have is he has these spike putting weeks, but he has a lot, he still has a lot more losing weeks than than winning weeks. You know, he has now lost putting in four of the last six, um, which is East Lake, Olympia Fields, TPC, Twin Cities, and Keen Trace, which it feels a lot like the Ricky Fowler stat profile that we've seen, where he has this one skill set that carried him to just an unreal run. He's still good, still better than a lot of these players in the field, but I really worry about him losing strokes putting. And if you can't putt here, you can't score here. If you can't score here, you're cooked. I just don't like the stat profile for a guy who's 10,100 where the other guys, the other three guys at the top of the range are, in my opinion, much better options, and you can get some value from the 9Ks. So um, pretty worried about Lucas Glover and the way he sets up for this. He's not very long. He's very accurate. That is going to be kind of uh, mitigated here. He's not going to get rewarded for his accuracy. He's going to still be behind the eight ball with his distance, and then the putter is a big question mark. So, um, boy, that that is, uh, I think it's a tough spot for him, admittedly. The 9K range. Okay, so we've got Bo Hostler, $9,900. I think he'll be relatively popular. He has owned the fall portion of the schedule. So if we look at last 16 rounds, he's played four events in the fall. Uh, he is the fourth best player in the series, getting 1.6 strokes per round behind Lucas, Sahith, and Ludwig. Um, in those last 16 rounds, I think all three of those other guys have victories. Luke List won, Sahith won, and then Ludwig's last 16 probably does go back to his win on the European tour. So uh, basically Bo Hostler playing at a level that winners are playing without the, the victory. You look at his profile, uh, just to get an idea of how he's been doing it this fall. And we're not going to have the full on, uh, stat profile from the Zozo championship, but he did finish a uh, runner up there, but you can probably assume it is strong ball striking. He gains off the team, basically every single event. He's been a, a positive player on approach and he's a very, very good short game player with the ability to get hot with the flat stick. Um, he has played this event five times again. We are moving to a different golf course. He's only played at El Chameleon, which is on the opposite side of the country. So you can say they can pay. Actually, we'll, we can do a little bit of this resort style golf course or tropical golf stuff um, in a second. But he has not played well at this event. But we are going to a new golf course and he is playing with a ton of confidence. The most interesting guy in the 9K range to me is, is Emiliano Grillo. And... Um, we have been tracking him very, very closely because I'm a sicko and I track this guy a lot. And what you have seen is a little bit of a slump from the BMW Championship to the Shriners, where I, I, I'm sure I wrote about this. I, I probably wrote about the Zozo. This is a very, very concerning stat profile. To, for, for Emiliano Grillo to lose strokes on approach in four straight, I believe is the first time in his career he, he had done that. That's concerning. A guy who's an elite ball striker. Now, we don't have the stroke game breakdown from the Zozo Championship, but that was a great finish. T10, he was in the mix throughout. Did he get back to striking it well? I'm I'm willing to take a little bit of a flyer here because a couple of reasons. Um, we are not that far removed from the Open Championship, the 3M, and the TPC Southwind where he piled up top 10 finishes he won in the in the summer this year he played great all year long he had this a little bit of a skid for four starts and now he's getting back to it the other thing and i'll loop this into a larger conversation um is is the past palm conversation now this is a different strain of past palm this is platinum past palm and past palm say it you know take a shot every time i say it is usually found in these tropical locations it is um more resistant to uh, seawater, which comes up from the ocean, obviously, and it is a larger blade of grass. There is a uh, theory out there that bad putters putt better on past pollen because it is not as penal. Okay, so that's kind of the theory. Now, if you look at the stats 
um, you're going to see Emiliano Grillo pop up a lot. Now, the way that you have to do this is you got to be a little bit careful here because most places that have past Palm, Puerto Rico, uh, might be Mayakoba, might be the Dominican Republic. It might be these places in which the PGA Tour does not take the shot link data. So we might not have the putting numbers. So I like to look at past Palm, strokes gain total, find those best players, and you're kind of assuming at, if they're playing well, they're at some point they're probably putting well. So let's just do last five years or go back to the start of 2018. Everybody in this field, we're gonna put them on. Uh, we're gonna put them on past Palm here, and let's see what we can get. So look who plays the best: Adam Long, 26 rounds, nearly two strokes per round. Two strokes per round is like elite level golf. Right, I mean, Mexico Open a couple times, Mayakoba, Corrales, um, PJ Championship at Kiowa had 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 past Palm. Um, Brandon Wu, one point seven nine strokes per round in twenty six rounds. Go down, go down, go down. Here's Emiliano Grillo, one point six strokes per round. The uh, there is no one who has played as many rounds as he has that has been as good on past Palm as he has. A uh, couple of Mexico Opens, Corrales, uh, PJ Championship in there. It's actually one of his worst finishes. Um, so so this is what you're getting at. Now we can also, you're going to see Joel Damon on here as well. You're going to see Sahith a little bit. You're going to see Akshay. The other thing we could do is, you know, we could do like a tropical resort style golf where we could say anybody, you know, any event that's played at God, the plantation course or in Dominican or in Puerto Rico or all that. But, but Paz Palm's a pretty good one. And I like to look at it from the strokes gain total portion of things. And that's why Emiliano Grillo pops. So I'm willing to take a chance on him. Akshay Bati is at $9,200, and I have a very difficult time handicapping Akshay. He's a very volatile player. Uh, he's all over the place. I think that quietly, most people don't realize he won that opposite field Barracuda like six starts ago. Okay, so he, he, he was opposite field king. He went T9 at the Barbasol, win at the Barracuda. Those were those two back-to-back -back weeks where it was, what, Scottish Open and the Open Championship. So it was, like, very, very quiet in which Akshay dominated. Now, he hasn't played as well since then, but he did finish T21 at the Zozo Championship. He has played a couple of times this fall. I am going to just sort this by his entire career, his best events by strokes gain total. This encompasses PGA Tour and Corn Ferry Tour, which, by the way, rickrungood.com, six tours, PGA, Corn Ferry, Senior, Live, Euro, Asian, it gives you a complete look at a golfer. That is my shameless plug. Look at where his best results are. A win in the Bahamas. A runner-up in Puerto Rico. A fourth at the Mexico Open. A T4 at the Bahamas, Great Exuma. That's a Corn Ferry Tour event. Win in Barracuda. T7 in the Bahamas. T9 at the Barbasol. So, of his best seven finishes ever, in his entire career, five of them are the Bahamas, Mexico, or Puerto Rico. Is that noise? Are those outliers? Does he love the tropical locations? I don't know. That is for you to decide. I am pointing it out. It is very, very interesting. He is $9,200. Um, those are probably the most interesting golfers in this range. I think JJ Spawn is fascinating. You know, he is not a golfer. I mean, he's very, very short off the tee. He's very accurate. That does not uh, necessarily get rewarded here, but he played well at the Zozo, which I think is much better suited for his game. Played well in Napa. I mean, he's played, he's played well recently. I worry about the putter. Uh, so probably out on JJ Spawn. There was one other thing I had to say. Oh, and I've already kind of penciled in Adam Svensson for winning the uh, RSM Classic. So I'm I'm obviously on board with what he is doing statistically. Um, finished T41 at the Zozo. We don't really know how he did it uh, necessarily, but played well in Napa. Played well at at Shriners. I don't think this is a great spot for him. I think it's okay. But I, I'm really going to like him when we get to Sea Island in a couple of weeks here. As we get to this 8K range, let me point out a couple of items to you here. So I'm going to go to the trends tool. And just this is just sorted by strokes gain trend, which is a calculation that says, how are they playing now versus their baseline? Adjust them accordingly and come up with a new number. Uh, Matt Kuchar is the third, quote, hottest player in this field. Um, that is over the last 35 rounds. 
compared to his own 100 round baseline. Uh, Isaiah Salinda, number one, again, we know the sample size issues. Ludwig, number two, Matt Kuchar, three. So it's like, whoa, okay, well, let's do a little bit of a deep dive on Kuch here. And you're going to see how darn good, how darn good he's been. That sounds like something that he he would say, right? So he went over and played the Andalusia Masters, finished T19 there, gained across the board except lost strokes, um, lost the hair with the putter, gained seven in Napa with the flat stick, which is honestly been one thing that he's struggled with, which is a little bit weird. He uses that, is he still using that left, that left or that right arm lock, which is like an insane an insane thing to do, but um, the results are piling up. Now, I think that he will be a little bit more popular than he should be because his history in Mayakoba is phenomenal. Uh, the win in 2018, which is, well, that's when he got in trouble, right? For tipping tipping the caddy three grand or whatever. Sorry, Matt. Uh, he made it right. He made it right. He sent the money over. Um, but that's, you know, he's piled up great finishes there, but we, this is a different golf course. Obviously, we've been talking about that a lot. I'm not so sure that this place sets up very well for him. Um, so while hot, I will probably take a wait and see approach. But if he's going to play, I don't know if he's playing Bermuda, but if he's going to play, I mean, he's almost certainly playing the RSM Classic, right? A Georgia guy, that that will be interesting. So somebody to keep an eye on over the course of the next couple of weeks. And if he plays, and, and I'll tell you what, if he plays well here, I like it when guys play well at places you don't expect them to, because that's a good sign. We've spent a lot of time on Davis Thompson recently. I think he's finding his way on tour, uh, pretty high on him. Let's talk about Chris Goddard up. He's $8,200 here. Um, and again, if you don't have the corn Ferry tour results, you are missing out on like his last 20 starts. So you got to have it. Go to rickrungood.com. Um, so he's played a lot and he's played well. He has not lost strokes to the field on the corn Ferry tour since like June. Okay. So we've got a T20, uh, October 8th, a couple weeks ago at the corn Ferry tour championship. They have not played an event since then. Played well at uh, Nationwide Children's Hospital. T5 at the Simmons Bank. I mean, he, he, these are one, two, three, four. What is that? Like six events in which he's finished five of them are inside the top 20. And what everybody loves about him, and they should, is the dude mashes. Right? I mean, he's a he's a straight masher. So when you talk about, you know, the Corn Ferry, which asks for a hell of a lot of scoring. When you talk about distance, which this golf course probably can ask you for. No surprise to see. Chris Goddard up will be pretty popular. Now, will that take away from Taylor Pendrith? Taylor Pendrith is just like a, a more polished Chris Goddard up. They're both going to mash it without regard for accuracy off the tee, but they're going to bomb it. They're going to try to beat you with the driver and then hopefully get the putter hot enough. Now, Taylor doesn't necessarily have to get the putter scorching hot. Gains two strokes putting at TPC Summerlin, finishes third last time we saw him. And that's kind of the big difference between him finishing T3 and missing the cut, right? Because he can lose you two strokes with the putter if you get a four-shot swing in that direction. So um, Pendrith, if you're if you're excited about Goddard, you should be excited about Pendrith too. They are uh, similar skill sets, similar talents, and Pendrith, Pendrith is honestly a more polished and a more successful version. The 7K range. And I ask for your forgiveness. I ask for your thoughts. I ask for your prayers. As I say the name Taylor Montgomery, $7,900. I'm terrified. However, he is long enough, incredibly inaccurate. I mean, literally what misses more fairways than almost anybody on the PGA Tour. Sh I'm going to say should not matter here. Please don't miss it by more than 65 yards. Is playing better. I understand that is a very uh, low bar. T35 at TPC Summerlin. T16 at the Zozo. The flat stick has been Taylor Montgomery-esque. I would not... This is not for the faint of heart. I will admit. But this is the best golf he's played in a year on a golf course that should set up well for him. That is all I will say. I'm not going to give you a harder sell than that. Maverick McNeely is back $7,500. Maverick McNeely has crushed it in Mayakoba. We're going to Cabo. Maverick McNeely has not played since the RBC Canadian Open. So I'm not going to be investing uh, in Maverick McNeely this week, but I do think he is someone to keep an eye on. He had... 
a shoulder injury. So look look at this stat profile, and it's it's not pretty. He was basically hurt the entirety of 2023, right? He had a couple of these WDs. Um, he remember he was injured and withdrew from Scottsdale. He he, I think he putted it into the water. He chipped it into the water from Greenside, it was, and it was he withdrew. It was a shoulder injury. Then he came back and tried to play through it, and it it was miserable. I mean, he lost just three four strokes off the tee every single start. Just brutal stuff. It just killed his stat profile. Um, and then he shut it down in June. And he did not have surgery, but he did like stem cell replacement. He did ex- extensive rehab. He did, uh, he mentioned golf. He had to change some things in his golf swing. So I'm just going to note that he's back. I'm I'm not going to be investing in Maverick McNeely. Um, let's see how he plays this fall. Let's see how he plays into the new year. Let's hope he's healthy. Let's hope he, you know we'll root for him. And then when we get to Pebble Beach and all that stuff, we can we can be interested. But I will note Maverick Maverick McNeely is back in this field. Keep an eye on him. The rest of the seven K range, you know, I've I've got it sorted now by um, strokes gain total. So best players in the last thirty six rounds in this range, and. I'm kind of looking for these hot golfers who this golf course might set up well for. Um, Eric Van Royen might be a good one, right? He is longer than he is straight. He's got a 30th, a 16th, and a 23rd in his last three starts. He's gaining 0.85 strokes per round over the last 36. Uh, that would be one. Callum Tarrant, 7th, 43rd, 23rd, 31st this fall. What does he do well? Well, Quite long, uh, quite inaccurate off the tee, hits a ton of greens, and we've seen him get scorching hot recently. That's pretty good, $7,600. So just as I kind of scroll through here, you know, those are guys to keep an eye out for. I am going to do a deeper dive into Vince, excuse me, Vince Whaley here, because he is, again, long, inaccurate, and has three top 28 finishes this fall. So I think that he is probably worth a little bit of a deep dive on. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty good play, even dating back to... So he played in August, he played the Boise Open on the Corn Ferry Tour, finished T6. So you lump that in now. So he goes T6, T25, T28, T13 across the Corn Ferry Tour and the PGA Tour with very solid metrics, understanding that he is long off the tee, but he sprays it, which should be fine here. Vince Whaley might be pretty sneaky at 7,500 bucks. I don't think a lot of people are going to be very interested in him. You know, you get Troy Merritt. Unfortunately, Troy Merritt's kind of in the category of, of Doug Gim. Like, they're playing well, but I'm not sure their strengths are emphasized here. Merritt's accuracy over distance. Gim, accuracy over distance. Tyler Duncan, of course, accuracy over distance. Ryan Moore, accuracy over distance. And Ryan Moore's quite short off the tee. So that that kind of stuff worries me. Not that there's only one path to get there. And, and honestly, we should really admit, we don't know. We, we have no idea what is going to be the stat profile of choice for this week. But um, I, I, the way that I see it, those guys are probably in a little bit of a tough spot. The 6K range. Adam Long popped up on that Paz Palm conversation. We'll see if he pops up when we get to the uh, custom model. We've got Kelly Kraft continuing to play good golf, going back to the Wyndham Championship where he finished 33rd, and then three events in this fall in which he's finished top 25 in all of them. Doesn't have a great stat profile for this golf course, but now we're getting into the part of the board where, listen, it's very, very uh, cheap, and there's not a lot of great golfers at this portion of the, the board. Uh, Rio Ishikawa got into this event by finishing fourth at the Zozo Championship. Kensei Harada got into this field by finishing fourth at the or sixth at the Zozo. Isaiah Salinda got into this field by finishing seventh at the Shriner. So if you are looking for that hot hand, parlay a top 10 into another or something of that nature, those are a couple of decent options. And then if you continue to scroll, continue to scroll, continue to scroll, you will get to. Where is he? Oh my God. I thought he was, I thought he was more expensive than that. Michael Block, $6,000. Michael Block, T15 PGA Championship, two missed cuts in PGA Tour events after that, the Charles Schwab and the Canadian Open. Um, we had him on the First Cup podcast for CBS Sports last week. He told us that he has, uh, I think he said he he's like, he's practiced like an hour 
a week or an hour a day. It was he he very much downplayed his chances for this week. Now, I don't know if that is him trying to under promise over deliver or what that looks like, but he was very adamant that he is working into shape and I didn't I didn't get a lot of confidence. If you want to go listen to that yourself or watch it on YouTube for yourself, it's golf on CBS on YouTube. It is um first cut podcast for CBS Sports on in your podcasting app. But he he downplayed that, downplayed that quite a bit for this week. He's he's the min price. Okay, let's run a model here. Custom model rickrungood.com. Oh boy, I haven't done this in a bit. All right, let's let's get after this here. So let's um let's do driving distance 20 strokes gained approach in the last 36 rounds 20 strokes gained putting let's do you know we could do bonus putting uh bonus we, let's do let's split this up so we'll do we'll do 10 on bonus putting bonus putting is do you make all your short putts and then how many putts do you make outside of i think it's 20 feet so it's basically like how hot can you get with the flat stick so we're going to do t- uh 10 there and then i'm going to put strokes gained putting last 50 will bounce a lot of these guys back to their baseline uh, for another 10. So we've got 40 to go. Let's also, we can't do, there's no course history. Let's do, I mean, we could do like Kapalua. We could do, well, let me look at this. We could do a mix of Kapalua, El Chameleon, Port Royal. Let's get freaky. Let's do just a little bit. Two on Port Royal, two on El Chameleon, two on Kapalua. I'm just looking for like coastal. I could do Wiley. It's not really, res- eh, it's pretty easy. Two there. Do I have any others? I got to be missing. Oh, Grand Reserve. Okay, so that's 10 on just kind of some course history comps just for kicks. Then I need some scoring stats here because I think you just got to make a ton of birdies. So we're going to put uh, 15 on birdies or better gained. And then let's put 15. Let's do um, let's do long courses for 15. My Wow. My number one golfer ahead of Ludwig Oberg. Is Ben Griffin seventy nine hundred dollars? Yeah, I mean he's just positive everywhere. Plays well at long courses, has good course history in there, gains enough birdies. His approach has been pretty good. Ludwig number two, Thomas Dietrich three, Emiliano Grillo four, Eric Van Royen five. So inside the top five, we have two golfers in the seven K range. There's Callum Tarrant seventy six hundred, Peter Quest seventy three. So inside the top seven, there are four golfers in the 7K range. Chris Kirk, Nate Lashley, Nick Hardy. Ton of 7K guys in there. So maybe time to embrace a little bit of chaos. Maybe time to change the model. I don't know. (laughs) I don't know. We'll save it and we'll check it out on... um, Check it out on Wednesday, but yeah, I mean that's fun. That's interesting. A little bit of comp courses, a lot on a lot on driving distance, a lot of on approach. Ben Griffin, how about that? Okay, that'll do it. Um, Again, Wednesday live chat, 3 p.m. Eastern time. Oh, oh, I almost forgot. I have not created it yet, but I by the time you're seeing this, I will create it. A contest on Splash, which is you just pick the tiers. I forgot last week. That's on me. I will go do that. The link will be in the description. It'll be like a top heavy payout. It'll be fun. You go and you put in, you pick one golfer from each tier across usually like six tiers and it's a lot of fun. So I'll put that in there uh, and I'll try to remember to do that every single week. I got some emails about that for the Zozo. My bad. It's on me. Otherwise, let's get after it. Talk to you guys soon. Good luck.